And I'll call the January 18th meeting of the School Committee and the Warren Finance Committee to order at this time. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. So, yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this being kind of an organizational and uh, beginning meeting for our meeting together to, for the purpose of working on the budget throughout the next few months. And uh, we're re actually, we're going to uh, ask our superintendent and our finance director to take charge of this meeting. Right. They'll be in charge of it. Great. Thank you, Judy. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. This is my <coughs> second year working with you, and um, I thought what we might do tonight is just do some quick introductions, and then I'll um, review some meeting norms, same ones that we had last year, just to review those. Um, Kim had sent out the packet, which is the budget procedures manual. I'd like to just make some comments on the front of this document, and then I'll give it to Kim to go through more of the technical pieces about why things are the way they are. Anywhere along the way, we're open to questions to clarify any part of the process. And of course, at the end, if there's questions that do not pertain particularly to anything that came up, that's what we're here for tonight. So I thought just to kind of warm us up to get to know each other again, we'd start with who you are. So I'll start, I'll give you an example. And one thing you really like. So I'm John Ross. I am the superintendent and principal. This is my second year here, and I really like working here. The thing I'd like to share with you is I really like to ski. I think you are second. I'm going to go this I way. Am. You, I told you I might go this way, but I'm going this way. I'm Judy Shane, chairman of the school committee, and i um, <clears throat> been on the school committee for quite a few years now and find it really exciting to see how education is moving along, especially here in the, in the town of Acton. Um, and what I love to do most is spend time at my <coughs> camp, which used to be my grandmother's camp, up in East Poland, Maine in the summer. I'm Jeanette Burris, school committee. That's all I have to say. No. What do you, what do you like? like? For a long time. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what she likes. She likes yeah. cats. All right, give me I like cat. I like oh. my kitties, yeah. Right. I like to work, but... She likes to keep busy. That's all. <laughs> Mary Stanton on the school committee, and what I really liked... Where's my picture? Oh, picture. <laughs> I liked going on the Capitol tour, and uh -huh. then I got to have a little meeting with Susan Collins. Cool. Oh, oh, nice. nice. Wow. Yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> Amanda Cobb, school school committee, um, and I really like reading. I love reading books. <laughs> Sarah Cognata, Warren and Finance. Uh, I like crafty things, um, but most of all, I really enjoy needle felting. <laughs> I'm Tom Gore. I also like skiing, although I don't do much of it anymore. And I also like sailboat racing, and mostly it's gardening these days. I'm William Williams. I'm the chair of Wharton Finance. I like reading, and I, right now I'm reading old classics again. I'm into Swift this week. <laughs> and uh, 19th and 20th century Russian music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Problem Waterhouse, Born Finance. Um, what I really like is my nine month old grandson uh, and delicious. political involvement. Okay. Susan Meehan, Born Finance. Um, what do I like? I like gardening. I used to like skiing, can't do mm -hmm. that anymore. And um, I'm a people person. <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly Stacy Horn, Selectman. How do I like? I love to read up at my camp. We had a camp over on Lover Lake that was my great grandparents. My grandfather, great grandfather, built it back in 1939, and so that's like my favorite thing to do in the summer. And I love my kitties and my dogs too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nancy Ruma. Uh, weren't finance committee member. Um, gee, gardening, reading. <laughs> and grandchildren. 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 Yes. <laughs> yep. We're all there. I'm Francine Young. I'm the curriculum coordinator. Um, I really like 
my drive to school after it snowed. It <laughs> looks, because when the sun's coming so up, beautiful. it really looks like you're driving into a black and white picture. Uh -huh. It's very pretty. Um, I like running. I haven't been able to do that for a while. I'm not very good at it, and I'm slow. But mm -hmm. I like being outside, being able to do that. And um, once August gets here, I'm going to really like being a yaya because my daughter is mm. expecting her first baby now. Oh, oh, wonderful. So I like that already. Yes. <laughs> um, Kimberly Oliver, I'm the personnel finance director, and I love, I love my job, but I also love going to camp up at Metabemps that my, my mom and dad have. And I also am going to be a first Grammy um, in February. Very soon. We can race. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll share some advice. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's, and thank you folks for coming out tonight. Is there anybody there would like to just say who you are? You don't have to do what you like if you don't want to, but. You could. Richard Hart, I like woodworking. Oh, nice. Cindy Hart, road committee. Cindy. Greg Matt. <coughs> I like being with my wife and walking my dog a lot. Okay. Brendan Mean, skiing. Jay Ward, I like to be on meetings on time. Carol <laughs> 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 Ward, I like not getting lost. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. That was great. Thank you, folks. Um, this is an informational meeting, so we're going to run it pretty informally with Q&A. So at any time, if anybody has something they'd like to ask or clarify, please jump in. I'd like to just share, last year we came up with some um, <clears throat> strive statements that we did quite well to work within, a framework to work within over the course of the next two and a half months that we'll be working together to go over every line of the school budget. And those six statements, just to remind the committee, um, is we will strive to work together as a community that values the education our children receive at AES. We'll strive to be fully present at the meetings by becoming familiar with materials and by being attentive. We'll strive to invite and welcome the contributions of every member and listen to each other. We'll strive to be involved to our individual level of comfort. Each of us is responsible for airing our disagreements during the meeting rather than carrying those disagreements outside the meeting. And we'll strive to be, we'll strive to operate in a collegial and friendly manner and we'll strive to be responsible for examining all points of view. So just we'll keep being mindful of those and I'll read those at the beginning of each one of our meetings when we get together to take a look at the um, the FY19 budget. If I could, I just want to take a few minutes to just take a peek at the document. I want to thank Kim Oliver for preparing all the materials and getting these materials out in a timely manner so that we could review them. But um, can I have one of those, please? Yes, yeah, so Sarah, send that down. Yeah. I just want to let you know that just recently the school committee uh, had voted on a couple of policies. It was uh, Tuesday night, alas, not this last Tuesday, but the Tuesday before. So we sent these right out Wednesday morning. And really the front is just kind of an introduction to uh, the, the responsibilities and the roles of the administration and fiscal accounting and reporting. I'm, I'm not really concerned about going over every piece of that. Um, but I did want to mention that there is a policy uh, as far as that we have to have an annual budget to run our school. What I'm most interested in covering with you is the um, timeline, which is really on page 7. It's double page. It starts on page 7. And we, if we just go right down to January 18th. Can we get one more down? Do we need another one coming down? Okay. A couple? Okay. I'll wait for those to come out. We're not used to having the table set up this way. I'm not used to reading that long. If you get the student council in, you'd be like our runners. So I'm on page seven right now. If you just go to seven and you go most of the way down, it says budget sessions. I just wanted to kind of remind people that. You know, tonight's an informational meeting on the on the budget process, and I'm hoping that any questions anybody has about the process, we can answer tonight. Because when we start on the 23rd, <laughs> as you can see, there's different articles that we're going to be looking at that starts on the 23rd and goes all the way out to an April 3rd town meeting on the school budget. So that's our calendar in front of us. And each night that we get together, you will receive the budget articles that we're looking at for the upcoming meeting in time for you to review all those articles, put any questions, any comments you might have. Then when we get together, you'll have a document that gives the, um, I'm kind of doing this from memory, it'll be the, the article, the cost center, a particular item, let's say it's supplies, it'll be last, this current year's cost that we're living in right now, what our current budget is, what the budget will be for that particular item or supply for next year, and then the percentage up or down and the dollar amount up or down. And that's how you'll receive your information on every item in the budget. 
And then, of course, when we're done, we can take a look at the totals of where we are. So that's the process we used last year, and that's the process I would like to use this year as well and get that information to Warrant and Finance in a timely manner so you can review it. The paper format's going to be basically the same as last year. Yes, okay. exactly. 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 It, it seemed to work quite well. I thought it was a good process. Yes. So before I hand it over to Kim, does anybody want any clarification, any questions about kind of the big picture or the work that's in front of us and how we're going to approach that and the dates? We just couldn't do this in one night and get it over with. <laughs> Whole budget. I mean, Mary, I love you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> time time I don't have a bunch of time. <laughs> may, I, sure, yes. may I start out before we go yes, into sir. details? I wanted to ask some questions about last year and the year before, I was present at the town meeting for the school budget, mm -hmm. and it was abhorrent to me that we only had a handful of people occupying one row of chairs. Last year, it, there was about, last year I came, there was about 70 people. Okay. It must have been the year before. Year before. Year before. And I don't know if 70 is large or small, because that's the only baseline it's I have to work with. It's small for 70. a town meeting, yeah. for yeah. a budget but that's town good. That's, 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 but it's that's, a that's good, good attendance. So my question is, is there any oh, yeah. way that you all and the selectmen can sit down and maybe look and see if there's a better way to do the scheduling such that we would get more people at the mm -hmm. school budget uh, vote, uh, perhaps the same number as the rest of the town voting. Mm -hmm. um, maybe sometime, perhaps not this year because it's too late, but mm -hmm. certainly in the future to have a joint meeting mm -hmm. and, and do the whole thing since you are the biggest department in the, in the town as far as uh, expenditures. But uh, it's, it's, it's sad when we have such a small number of people who are making big, big decisions. Mm -hmm. You mean the town meeting and the school? Uh, As it we, apparently we used to, used to be. They, oh, yes. yeah, that's the way it was. Yes, yeah. and for some reason or other, over the years, there seems to have been a... It, the, change came, the change came about, Dr. Williams, when the um, uh, reorganization of schools came about and when the budgets had to be approved and if they weren't approved, you had to go back again. And some, some, many districts have had to go back. We had to go back one year, two or three times, to get our budget approved. And then it puts it too far into the summer if we wait until June. So the main reason that the dates were changed were because of the fact that if the school budget doesn't pass for any reason at all, then you have a certain amount of time before you can present it again. <clears throat> so. This is set up, I believe, so that if we if we should not pass our budget, then we would have a second opportunity to do at it the at meeting. the regular town meeting. And again, this is something that I would <coughs> urge the school board to do with the board of selectmen because some towns do their their mm -hmm. big town yeah. meeting early yeah. than what we do. We, we used to have it in March. We used to do it back in what? March. 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 Then everybody yeah. complained because <coughs> they were all in Florida. Well, in I, June, they're, they're all, all on busy going to the beach. The, I yes. mean, <laughs> March, March works better. Does it work could, better it because could be. people aren't involved? They're outside. They're outside when we get to June. The other part of the problem is the other part of the mix here is that we changed the fiscal year too. Mm -hmm. and, and back back then, the fiscal year was a calendar year. Right. Mm -hmm. And but but the town does not have to make its appropriations for the fiscal year. There are ways around doing that. The whole process could be changed, but it wouldn't be a combination of considering all those things together. Mm -hmm. In fact, what the, in fact what we used to do was, we carried an authorized selectman to carry into the year, uh, so everything that was spent after January one, uh, they had authorization to spend for, um, but the appropriations had not been made. But we made the appropriations in March, and it was assumed, presumably, that the we weren't going to. <laughs> we weren't going to not authorize an expenditure that the that the selectmen had already spent. And in fact, that's the way it worked. It actually worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. And the other problem was when we had to do it by referendum vote. We had just so school much time to the, for the school we budget at the polls, a referendum. Right. And finally, this last time, we were able to pass it that we would be able to go back and do it the old way, so to speak, to be able to do it at a town meeting. No, I, th I think there's considerable sentiment for, 
for moving the whole operation back into uh, into March and April. But there is, yeah. I don't, okay. I don't know. I, yeah, in town. Yeah. <laughs> and I really think that having it all together, I mean, really, we have a, a, a link on the town website to, to the school board, but we don't even list the meetings of the school board on our town uh, uh, website. I mean, you all <laughs> could be in, in Berwick for all I know in terms of looking at the at the website. We we just are too separate, and you're the biggest department mm -hmm. in our town. Mm -hmm. That could be added. Could easily be added. It just probably should be added to the website I'm, if it's I, not it, on it's there. Up it to used the board to, it to used to me. say on there that the school committee met on the on the second Tuesday, Tuesday. of the month mm. at yeah. six o'clock at the school. It used to. Maybe it's changed since then. It doesn't. Know. Doesn't say it no. now. So, I mean, just, I think just little things like that, and big things of getting more direct democracy participation. I, I don't know whether that meant that people got angrier at a total uh, town committee and were more apt to vote against the budget if they were 278 people rather than 78 people. I don't know if that's, that's true or not, but I do think having it together might be a positive way as far as democracy is concerned and having more people participate. The other thing I wanted to bring up, if I could at the beginning, and that is I'm still having a hard time with the negotiations that go on. Now, this coming year, uh, this year, is going to be the negotiation year, is that right? No. Not the next year. Not this year. year, it's going to be 2019? Mm -hmm. Correct. Good, so we have another year to Correct. To this worry is not a negotiating okay. This budget season is not a negotiating year. That's fixed. Good. Uh, as you'll but see. But I would like yeah. very much to, to explain to myself how we can take monies for two fiscal years mm -hmm. ahead and have the town meeting vote for them when the town meeting for the next year and the year after certainly hasn't met yet. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there's <laughs> something that we need to at least do as far as monetary or even verbal verbiage on this because for our town to agree to a budget that includes this fiscal year and <coughs> two more fiscal years in the future just can't be right. So the contracts themselves with, it's a, it's a very typical collective bargaining agreement, and the contracts right. are with labor who are the teachers and the ed techs or support staff. The, the bargaining unit is set up over a three year period, but the year to year contracts are just at their annual. So Kim sends out each year based on our budget the agreement between the school committee, it's not myself, it's the school committee and the individual employee based on that collective bargaining unit for that year. But the bargaining unit is set up in a three year span so that it doesn't have to be bargained every year. It gets bargained once for three years. But we're, what we're not doing, and I want to make sure we're clear about this, is we're not setting a contractual agreement with our employees two years out in time. Okay. We're saying that the bargaining unit has agreed that we are year to year employees based on this amount that we've agreed to pay you with these benefits over three years. That's what the agreement is. Now for any reason if something were to shift or occur in town finances and we needed to look at that, that's where each year we would then have to say, well what does this mean to us? Does this mean a reduction in force? And there's rules for that. So there's rules for just about anything that could happen financially, but the contracts are year to year with each employee and that happens <coughs> generally in May. April? After, after, after the, the town after meeting? The town after meeting. the town meeting. Okay. And then I get them ready prior to the school year ending for the start of July. Of the July 1. September. Yeah. Let and me, let and me. it is the same, it's the same system that it's the, the every, yeah. all school districts, all school districts, if you look in, nobody bargains every year. They all do it on a two or three year, mostly on a three year basis. But isn't that because they're either an SAD or an SAU yeah. or a CSD or how many towns around here are not a single entity department of the town? It, it honestly, honestly, Dr. Williams, it really doesn't matter no, because it doesn't. it doesn't matter because we're bound to go by the uh, main statutes I for education. Uh, I can answer education. your question. The nearest one would be Sanford. Sanford is their own LEA. We're called an LEA, which is a okay. local education ed agency. So we're part of the, you know, we're part of the town. We're not a several town combined school district. Sanford is a singleton, and they're next. So that would probably be the answer to your question. They're the nearest one that is their own 
educational unit. They're not a, they're not a town meeting form of government, but let me go no, back no. to what you were saying just so I'm clear. Sure. Um, as I understand what you have said is that there is provision in the contract for you to go back at the beginning of each year and and renegotiate if issues arise, no. which means it's contingent upon an action of the town meeting. Do you I understand that? No, the, the only way I can open a contract is if the union and the school committee agree to open it to talk. And when you do that, it opens up, it could open up all language. Okay. Then, then I think, well, we can talk about this okay. later, but well, we, we, we have an issue here. But I don't know. The way I understand it is that every three years, you sign an agreement for these certain positions. Correct. This is what you're going to pay. Then every year, you send out a contract with your okay. individual teachers, and their mm -hmm. pay is based on this negotiated mm -hmm. agreement. Yes, yes. In other words, you you and if uh, there were difficulties, and it's the same thing in Sanford. They pass a school budget every year. Right, right, right. right. I, I mean, every school district does that. But you know, if you are going to fill these positions, this is what you've agreed to pay based on their longevity and level of education and then you send out the contracts to the individual teachers on a yearly basis. That's exactly right. After the budget is passed. After, After the budget, budget After is passed. After the budget is passed. Then we have to wait for medical insurance to see what that's going to be doing. We never know that until almost the last minute. Pretty close, yeah. And I guess my, my question would be that the economic times are getting mm -hmm. worse right now. And, this, and the country may be faced with a lot of inflation during this calendar year. And if I were a teacher, I'd want to have negotiations annually at this point. Well, we did. I'm that. not against giving the teachers uh, a decent salary. Believe you me, I would. Mm. You know, if we could mm -hmm. get me, if we could be in Finland, I'd be there. Okay, because they pay their teachers more than the president of the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a really really high honored position, and it ought to be here too. But. I just, I, I have a, a bad feeling. How can the Wharton Finance Committee say, well, I don't think such and such is an appropriate salary for this coming year? And the answer came back, well, it's already been decided by negotiations two years ago. I mean, we have 78% of the budgets already on autopilot. Is that a pretty good pretty much. percentage. I don't know what the percentage is, but, but it's all. Human resources is a, would be considered a fixed cost. To answer your question on that, it's, yeah. I used to call it, in my other district, turning the page from year to year, if you have a three-year <coughs> contract, mo your human resources under collective bargaining are known. We know that, and that's mm -hmm. a public document, so anybody can see it. My, my response to your question was in particular about whether people are guaranteed that rate in the future. How can you guarantee monies two years out? And my comment, well, that was <coughs> my response, question. yeah, my response was, well, really not. But you want to give a three-year, I don't know of anything less than three years. I heard you say two, but I'm not familiar with it. Most every school district I know is three years, and part of that is <coughs> some sort of a, it's not a guarantee, but that people know that they have a job in this area. We have people that commute from Rochester and Portland and other places, and if we went year to year keeping a good teaching base, may be part of an issue. I think, I'm guessing, that's why school districts went with a three-year plan when this whole thing got invented many, many years ago. But I can assure you this, gentlemen, we are not an anomaly. We are not different because we're doing three-year contractual bargaining with our uh, support staff and our teachers. I, I'm, I'm, I just, I just want to see, sure. do I understand correctly from what you've said, or, or I understand from what you've said that the contracts go out after the appropriation is made, is that correct? Correct. After the after town the has voted okay. on the school budget and it has okay. passed. So yeah. the, the three-year contract is a contract that covers the bargaining unit, but it does not involve individual teachers or positions. Right. So that leaves, puts you folks in the position of making those adjustments after the approval mm -hmm. of the budget. That's, that's that would be right. correct, and there's rules to that too. First, you know, last okay. in, first out kind of thing. Seniority, all those things play. Yeah, that's fine. That, yeah. that so the contract is made with the bargaining unit and not with individual teachers. That that, right. that solves right. that's the solves CBA that is. Yeah. That that, yes, Tom. Thank okay. You. You're the welcome. last thing I want to talk about, and that is, I I truly have been approached by so many people as to the data that our school has as far as proficiency, as far as ranking. And I am against a lot of ranking. I don't know whether it's positive or negative. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Of course, many agencies use different statistical uh, databases in order to make ranks. Mm. But the one everyone apparently is, is watching is the school digger. And they have a very complex system mm. of ranking. But it, apparently, at least all schools in Maine are ranked by school digger. Mm -hmm. And they're all using the same school digger database and statistical metho methodology. And I'm trying to figure out, we're 161 out of 295 mm -hmm. elementary schools this 2017. Two stars. And I guess I think that many people who've come up to me and asked me about it, I had no answer as to the database that we have that we can show and compare how much it costs mm -hmm. and why it is that certain school districts like the Berwicks are four star mm -hmm. and their students appear to have done better on the sure. proficiency tests in comparison with ours. And if it is more expensive for us per student per year, then the question is, what are we doing wrong? Because most people would say, if we're going to spend more money than the average school in Maine, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't mind doing it if I knew we were really top notch and top drawer as far as proficiency results. But I don't see that and I can't find it and perhaps you all have the data to sure. show. My, yes. my response would be I'd be cautioned on something called school digger on the internet. I know. I, 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 I looked at, start it, that. I looked at their it. methodology yeah. and Good. it was okay. screwy, okay? Sometimes it has to do with real but estate. But at least and all to to schools were sure. using the same methodology. That's, all, that's the only thing I can say in their favor. Right. Uh, okay? Right. But there must be some other data. How much does it cost us as a town to educate an elementary student mm -hmm. for one year? And how does that compare with Newfield, mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon, South Berwick, whatever? Mm -hmm. Do we have any data like that? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we do. We, can, we generate that, and we also generate our achievement data through the state MEA results, okay. as well as some of our local assessments as well. Um, when you get into achievement results, you need to kind of really, I would suggest when we do that at a workshop at the school committee, come to the meeting because we really will get into how our second graders, uh, how our third graders might do against you know the other third graders across the state. And, English, reading, writing, and in math. That's when we really dig into how well our students do. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend being careful with what we find on the internet. And I'm not that, picking right? out anything specific. I do, I do know that there can, there is the state of Maine Department of Education will look at um, what the EPS formula is and what it should, what you should raise to, to uh, educate a child, let's say, in K through six or K through eight. And they have all that information. And they also have information on each town as well. Some, some local publication I saw here in the spring took the York County schools and rated them by cost per pupil. I don't remember which publication it was, but I remember seeing it in the Sanford area this spring. Wasn't it either the Bangor Daily or the Portland was, Press Herald? I saw it in a, one of the Sanford shops, yeah. yeah. I can't remember what it was, but well, that, that's data based, I would assume, based on state data, not something on the internet. That's perfectly yeah. fine. I wasn't trying to specify no, no, a specific I understand. database. Sure. But what bothers me is that so many people come up and say, "Is it? I've been told, is it true that mm. we spend more money per student yeah. than most yeah, towns do? do. And I said, probably so, we because do. we're an independent district. Exactly. But I said, there's some benefits of being <coughs> an independent <coughs> district. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, when I looked up on whatever they looked right. up, uh, we weren't any better than they were. In fact, in some instances, they were better than we were mm -hmm. as far as proficiency testing. If we're going to try to get more people to be involved with the school, mm -hmm. sure. we ought to have those data on the tip of our tongue and be able to tell people, hey, yes, we're spending a little bit more per student, but let me tell you, they're getting a much superior education. Not only are they getting cultural enrichments like music and art, but they're also getting a good proficiency in, in, basic, uh, in basic studies and have data to show them. That's and all that's I'm asking. And that's, that. the yeah. of the and that's part board. of the reason right. that it is more per student because in a larger district, you would have an art teacher that would go to several different schools. Well, we have, when, we're not several schools, we're just one. So we have, we have the specialties so that our kids get, don't get robbed just because we're a little school of the same experiences that they would have. And frankly, I think they, they get a much better experience you're, uh, you're singing to the, the choir. <laughs> yeah. You're singing to the choir. All I'm saying is if we're going to be asking them 
right. and people are saying <coughs> they spend I more money so. per student, mm -hmm. then we ought to be able to show them, yes, but this is what we get for our money, which mm -hmm. is good. And you, if you could put those data together so that we could even help broadcast it, mm -hmm. I would be very grateful. Doesn't it have something to do with the assessment of the town also? Uh, on yeah. state aid. On state, state aid. That's an easy state state aid. Aid. So we have a very, on your very low receiver mm -hmm. because we have a lot of high assessment, high assessment. High assessment. Mm -hmm. So I we get, and that, of course, drives up the cost per pupil in the long run. Right, because the state considers Acton to be a very rich town, rich town because of all the lakefront property, et cetera, et cetera. So it comes well, it's all back, the more reason comes, why, comes if, back to if it is true, and we have all these rich people around the lakes, <laughs> they're wanting to know why we have an independent school district. Because when they look up on the internet, they can't find any evidence. Well, for tell them not to do that. That's a whole lot of stuff. That's a whole lot of stuff. I'm just, I'm just, okay, I'm just I, I, saying, I totally understand. You should have those sure. data sure. available. The last thing I want to bring up before we get started, and I appreciate your, your. Uh, giving me a chance to, to speak, and that is that we had data, I know that Sanford, when they had that meeting with you all mm -hmm. back in the, in the spring of this year, mm -hmm. uh, they had some great data mm -hmm. as far as our superior students, the yeah, fact that so many of them uh, out of mm -hmm. proportion of their presence were in fact <laughs> on the honor rolls, etc. Mm -hmm. What about the ones who, fall, who are fallouts? Uh, we don't have any data. What? How many students from Acton get into the high school in Santa Fe and drop yeah. out? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. We've never asked them that. What I did ask them is, how do we do for the students that we send to Sanford High School? How do our Acton students compare? Because that's where we send them. Right. And in comparison, as you said, in comparison overall, as a cohort of kids, about 100 kids in a building of about 900 kids. Right. They compare quite high. Quite high. But to specifically say out of 100 kids that might go in a, in any four years, how many are in the top 10 and how many don't graduate within a four-year span, I never asked that question. Or how many from Correct. Acton just sort of fall out. Right, what would be the ones who wouldn't well, graduate within a four-year cohort. Graduate. Correct. I'd, I'd never asked that question, so I can't answer it. I don't know. Because those are the ones I think that would, to me, be important. Sure. The smart kids are going to do well. Yep. Uh, they might do really fantastically well with a good system, but they'll still do well with a bad system. But it's the ones that are marginal to begin with mm -hmm. that I worry about. Right. Uh, as far. And if we could get data like that even to show mm -hmm. that we had a high uh, incidence of, I don't know what, it, we turned out that, that our dropout rate or our fallout rate or our non-graduation rate is still better than the average town or something of that sort. Right. And the way that's calculated, I have a pretty broad high school background, is the number of students that come in freshman year and how many in that they call cohort graduate within the four years of the time that they show up as right. freshmen. That's it's a cohort e it's type easy to find. Mm -hmm. You take students who moved out, you take other things out, yes. but who stayed and where did they go? And again, I, I think those are important data to show that why we spend more money is because we do a better job. And I don't think we're, we're giving that message out. No, I understand and I appreciate that too, because I've heard you say that a few times. It's, it's good information to have. Yeah. I'll shut up. No, I'd like, to answer, I'd like to answer. Back in 2008, when the economy was bad and it tanked, we did have a one-year contract. I think we even ended the contract and then went back in because we knew the times were bad and we didn't want to raise taxes. So we, we do have the ability to go one year. However, every time you do that, lawyers get involved, money, it it's costs expensive. on the other end. So it depends mm -hmm. on where you want to spend says. the money. Mm -hmm. Um, we do. Th I'd like to do five years, mm -hmm. because but you don't. You're not allowed. Three years is the max, um, because to meet and to hash out everything again, it's it's very difficult. I've been twice, <coughs> three times now actually, back when I was on the school committee earlier, um, but now the last two times I've been there. And if you have any questions, anything that I can answer, not f from a personnel point of view, but I can answer why you know the contract is written the way it's written so if you need help there um, the other thing is I think this town knows and I, I feel like I bring it up all the time that when um, my daughter went here and now she's 33 um, there were 300 here at the school or 333 actually I think it was at that time and so now there's 200 in this school, but of course, but of course we added preschool. Right. Okay. That's good. So you know, but there was 199 kids here just a little while ago, 
And then you go, wait a minute, why do we still have full time, a full-time worker in art, music, and gym? You know, should we keep that, the computer lab, you know, the gifted and talented? And it's really the people who do vote, who are interested, feel that we should have full time. When I first got to this town, 22 years ago, we didn't have full-time art, music, and gym. They weren't full-time. They were part-time right. teachers. And, but then, you know, like I said, <laughs> the, um, the population grew to 333 or something, some crazy number. There was a lot of kids here. And then it waned, you know, so. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm not against uh, having special art and music. I'm not even <coughs> against having full-time art and music. No, but that what's, that's what's bringing our <coughs> <coughs> price per pupil up because that, there's that's a, what I want to see a though. low amount of students and a lot of people helping these kids I mean we have you Technician, know I understand a social that. work full-time social work and we have all these things that's then I then some of them will say then let's see what the results are mm -hmm. okay but you can't. I totally agree with you yeah. but we don't have any data to show them well, we do have data. Just, well, we, we don't data. have it tonight to give to you to say this that's is why, where we That's rank. why I'm asking for it, for our sakes, all of us, because uh, we have to explain why we're more expensive. And there are good reasons why we're more expensive, but I want to be able to show them in dollars and cents and, and comparison with towns around us or towns in the western part of York County. But, uh, thank and I you. think I, th I think another thing that's playing into it right now too is that with the switch over from uh, standard traditional instruction to proficiency based mm -hmm. instruction, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the other school districts around around are not as up to speed on that as we are here in Acton. I think we are setting a pretty good example mm -hmm. for where we are in proficiency based mm -hmm. learning. Uh, even compared with Sanford and some mm -hmm. of the biggest systems, mm -hmm. so um, what data you what data people could gather right now would be a lot of it would be from traditional rather than from where we're actually moving now towards meeting all the standards and, and individualizing instruction. But again, part of our thing ought to be even next year we should be even more proficient at this, mm -hmm. and our numbers should be better again next yeah. year and the year after. And they All are. I'm asking for <laughs> is to have some baseline that we can start with, yeah. so we can give not propaganda but real right. information right. to the voter mm -hmm. and get them more interested in the mm -hmm. school. That's all. I think the, I think Warren Finance, most of the members of Warren Finance anyway, strongly support the school and always mm -hmm. have. Yes. And, and think you folks do a, a really good job. I think the things that we are seeing though on Warren Finance and throughout the town is the town has grown quite rapidly over the past few years and is going to continue to do so. And um, a lot of the people who are moving to town don't know, don't understand, don't know the history. And we're going to have a great many more retired people, mm -hmm. okay, who, are, who love to move to their camps on the lakes. This is happening big time. They're tearing down their houses and building year round, yeah. right? And, and these people aren't going to have the history, mm -hmm. nor understand. Nor the children. And, and, and nor, the nor, the right, children. nor the children or the interest, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think where we would like to be, we're answerable to those people from the perspective of how much it costs. And we would like to be in a much, much stronger position than we are, okay? We're not in a strong position right now. To be able to, to be responsibly answerable to those people from the point of view of foreign finance. We're coming at this from a different angle than you are. You know mm -hmm. that, okay? So, I'll but not that. adversarial. No, completely no. understandable. No, yeah. no. Yeah. I totally, completely understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah and appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah, it makes sense. But we also do get data on the high school. We try to meet with Sanford twice a year. Yeah. San Sanford School Committee. And um, on those meetings, we do ask them how are our children oh, okay. doing, yeah. and yeah. we do oh, yeah. find out if anybody's dropping out, are there any problems? And I, I don't, from the past, say, five mm -hmm. years, I don't remember hearing too many dropouts. No, I don't. Know. But, but it would be nice to be able to say, this is how many we have dropped out. True. Right. You know, yeah. they all know that it's all there. We've it's looked at hard the to issue. Find. Yeah. You know. And compare it with the main average. Right. right. But you can't. X bar is, is how many don't finish high school to get a, a, a diploma from the other uh, high schools. 
Right. You know, we're kind of yeah. unique here. I mean, we had to fight for this donut hole oh, yeah. to stay alone. And they I wanted see, us this to is, join. Nobody knows that better than Morton Finance. Yeah, you know, they wanted us to join whoever, you know. I'm just, it, it I'm just, just asking and pleading with yeah. you. Oh, I know, I know. Because we've got to get more people involved with the voting. Yeah, I know. Okay? That's a tough And with the is. budget. And we have to answer some questions. And most people will not be adverse to spending a little bit more money mm -hmm. per student if they say we have the best damn schools in Western mm -hmm. York County. Mm -hmm. Maybe the best schools in York County. Maybe the best schools in the entire county. I'm glad Tom County. mentioned that there's been growth in the town because we've seen growth in our student population just in the last year. But this is yeah. growth that, that yeah. isn't going to bring students to the town. But there is especially retired people. The retired, retired people won't. No, but right. the, but there are also. I'm I'm not sure where you're getting your information, but we're we're seeing it here. We get people that come in for a while there in the fall. It was about once a week somebody new would show up, and it wasn't a child. It was like four children, yeah. mm. and all of a sudden it's like okay, and yes, I had to look at class sizes friend. and other things. I think there's yeah. four. A set of <laughs> twins, right? Yeah. Um, and they moved the on a house, you know, in a house on on the lake. Right. And they're going to live there full time now. That's what's happening. Yeah. So, happening. but that was a young family. Right. So, those kids. But, but I think, they're moving here I think with that's lots a of trend. Money. Well, and well. they came from Sanford. It's not like they came from somewhere else. Did they bring so a people plow are realizing. I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah. for the preschool. For the preschool. Did they bring a plow and a shovel? Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. all. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Kim at page nine because at page nine we really get into the different articles and how those are built, and that's really the work ahead of us over the next couple of months. Basically, um, one of the things that we're required to do, which is also a town policy, is we have to provide a budget book. And that budget book goes out before the town meeting, and it includes all the articles that we review, so everything that's on this um, calendar. And it will have all the details of every line item. It'll have last year's, this year's, the change, the variance, and the narrative. So we try to make it as transparent as possible. This is what we are budgeting for. Um, it also includes a comparison from the last couple of years to the current year. Um, there's also <coughs> an enrollment projection, so you can see this is how much our school has grown a lot just in the last year. Um, we've gone from 238 the year before, and now we're up to 256. And we've grown from this summer from 242 to 256. So it's like, <gasps> please. <laughs> um, uh, we also, it also provides, um, the state requires us to do the essential programming services calculations and I try to do all the math in the article so you could see exactly how it's put together okay as far as all the math um, so that, that's basically what is in your in the booklet that goes out at the beginning before and it usually goes out after everything is done with Warren and finance and it's out for a couple of two or three weeks before we actually have our town meeting and we have a whole slew of them at the town meeting we put it on our website. We try to make it available to a lot of people. So. Kim, the 256 is just for the elementary school. Yes. Do we yes. have an increase in the high school as yes. well? Yes. About how many? What's our high school population? I went from 87 and I'm now up to 93, 93. and 4 at private schools. So, yeah. At Thank 10, you, And we budgeted for 88? Yeah. Uh, 83. We'll run somewhere around 10 5 a kid. We'll be talking later. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just tell you, every child is approximately just say 10 or 11,000. Yeah, yeah, per child. Yeah. 10,000. Yeah. Per high school. high school child. Yeah. 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 yeah, basically, the way that the Sanford, the way the contract is with Sanford, it's the state average cost the prior year, so that way we can budget exactly how much it will be for the upcoming year based on the number of students we have at the time that we do the budget, what's just, the only drawback is the number that we put on in the budget, it has a tendency to grow by the time we actually get through the school year. So, mm -hmm. um, but we do have the reserves for, for those types of situations so that way if it does and we can't cover it within the article, we do have that to back it up with. Um, without um, 
spending a lot. So the budget warrant, and this seems to be um, page, 10. page 10. This is where a lot, it's, it's part of all the state Title A, Title 20 A requirements, everything for E, the essential programming is there. The articles are written out, and you really have to follow the wording the way the state tells you to write it. Um, and the way the warrant lays out um, the first set of warrants, Articles 2 through 12, they basically are when we go through each one of our warrant meetings and we'll do like our first one will be article six so whatever the number that is agreed upon with the school committee and the warrant and finance that's the amount that would end up on the article for article six okay so article two is like regular instruction article three is special education article four is for High school. Tech school, but we don't, it's always zero because we don't have a tech school. Article five is for stipends uh, for extracurricular activities like sports, basketball, baseball, and other things like Legos and um, yearbook, things like that. Um, article six covers support staff. So we're talking about the nurse, guidance, the library, um, the instructional coach, and, or curriculum coordinator, sorry, and tech, um, and tuition for teachers, uh, for education. That's all in Article 6. Article 7 <coughs> is central office. Article 8 is the front office, or the, the principal's office. Um, Article 9 is our transportation contract, and Article 10 is maintenance and facilities maintenance. Article 11 is debt service, which we don't have any. And Article 12 is for nutrition, so cafeteria. So the, those sets of articles, when we are voting on those articles, we are basically putting the maximum we can spend within those articles. We're not raising and we're not appropriating any money. We have to set each one of these articles with a cap. <coughs> it says, you know, if our transportation is $100 and that's what we voted, that's where it is. I can't go and spend $300 on it, okay? So that's, it tells us this is our cap, okay? And if, if we go over that, if something comes up, then we, um, we have other, there's some mechanisms that we have to work with. Um, we try not to go there. Um, we try to, you know, when we budget, we try to budget for what we really need. Um, the total of those articles is the total of our school budget, and that is what goes into um, articles 13 and 14. So articles 13 and 14, they are articles that say you're going to raise and appropriate and, and you have to follow the essential programming formula, okay? And the state, and it doesn't matter if you're a very large, big RSU or SAD 57 or Acton <coughs> Elementary or Kenny Bunk Elementary, whatever, you have to follow the same format because the way that the state funding comes down through, every school has to have the same format so that they're comparing apples to apples with every school. If schools did it all different, there's no way that the state could be reasonable as far as making sure their funding is uh, across the board. Does that, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm going to ask you for is show me references <clears throat> okay, to document why you, okay, you no, go. state law, okay, state law. that says it has to be done, okay, that's yeah. fine, all right, it, yeah. it, all right, we can talk about this mm -hmm. later, but this obviously has been an issue and it's going to continue to be an issue <coughs> until we resolve it, and I'd like to do that sooner rather than later. This, <laughs> this is, I mean, like I said, we, we, um, everything here, okay, especially article, 
this essential programming services, this, when you start reading it, you realize that it's the same language that's in here. I think I've read it, you. but that's okay. Hmm? I said I think I've read it, but that's, okay. I'd like to see what that reference is later. The statute, is, the statute is right on the article. Title 28, Section 15688. I understand. I've read that. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Oliver, yep. when you have monies in a reserve type of account, I'm not going to go into what kind of reserve account it is, uh, and say you get this big increase in population as far as student population, what is the mechanism of being able to transfer those funds without the towns knowing about it? Or how do you do that? What's the mechanism of moving m money from a reserve account into your active okay. uh, expenditure accounts? When, when the articles, when these reserve accounts were put together, they, they the articles, mm, let me just see if I got one here. It, it basically stated exactly what we could do. Um, each article had how, to, how we created the account. Right how we transferred money into the, and, and we had authority to do everything, okay? So the town authorized us to be able to create the account, to transfer monies into the account, and what the purpose was for, what it only could be used for, and that if it became necessary that the school committee could vote to transfer the money to be used for that, only for that particular expense, okay? so. If at the end of, we get to uh, May, and we realize that Article 2, which is our regular instruction, which is where the high school tuition is, and say because we had eight more kids come in, <coughs> and it's $10,000 a piece. Now granted, that's for the whole year, and they, so it wouldn't be that much because it might have only been part right. of a year. And if within that article we didn't spend all the supply money, we could use that to help offset some of those expenses. So in other words, Article 2, when we go down through it, right, we go everything from teacher salaries to benefits to supplies to equipment to software to, you know, every, in the, every expense that goes within regular and secondary instruction. Um, if for some reason we got a better deal on software um, and we had, you know, $1,000 left over, we could use that to help offset the increase that we would get if we have an extra student in mm -hmm. tuition because it's all within the same article, okay? We don't have a line item by line item budget. When you, when you vote, you vote for the capital, the, the, the cap that we can do for regular and secondary instruction. So. And who goes through that in terms of, of assuring accountability as far as the that's my job. treasurer? That's what you do. That is my job. No, that's, that's what we do as a joint committee when yeah. we build the budget. Excuse me. <coughs> we, go, uh, we go line by line mm -hmm. for each article, six right. being the first one. Therein is the crux of the problem in a town meeting form of government. That's the, that's the problem, that, there, that, there's, that there's a lot of opportunity here for misunderstanding on the part of the public. Um, but, but we're going to move to resolve that too. I, I, I'll just shut up. But that's, there's a, there's, there is one article here effectively that, that raises and appropriates. And that's fine, okay? But the implication from what's being presented is that you're, you do have a line item budget, but you don't. You're not exercising those line item budget. And that's a source of confusion for the town meeting and the issue that I've been trying to address for a number of years now, but that's, we can talk more about that later on. Let's not get hung up on it. Okay, well, because um, I'm not really sure where you, uh, so the first 12 articles, I could, let me right. rephrase mm. that. So when we go through, like next Tuesday, we're going through article six, right. all right? Now, we'll get done, we'll go through it, we'll make changes, we'll say, Okay, <coughs> this will go up, this will go down, you know, take this out, put this in, and then we have a total, all right? So it's that total that goes in the warrant. That, that's the one that goes in Article 13 and 14. No, well, that's part of it. That's part of it. That's Article 6. That's part that gets added to the others that goes right. to 13 and 14. They add them all together. They add them all up. So well, I, under, I understand <coughs> that, but you use the term appropriation. 
in the articles 13 and 14. You do not use those terms right. in the previous, in the in 1 through 12. No. If you don't use those terms, then you no. don't have a line item budget anymore. No. That has no meaning, but that's okay. We'll get to that. <laughs> no. <coughs> the first set of articles, 2 through 12, they only say to expend. How much is the maximum we can expend within that article? All you're doing is putting a cap. You're not, you're not raising no any money. Than. You're not appropriating any money. You're just saying, we have to say, this is our school budget, X amount of dollars. However, X amount of dollars has to be divided up between Article 2, 3, 5, 6. And it has to be only a max for this, only a max for this, only a max for this. Those maxes total 13 and 14. I understand. And I understand what you're saying. The point here is that the only numbers in here that matter to the town meeting are what is raised and appropriated. Right. You folks control everything that goes on within the Articles 1 through 12. They are not an issue for the town meeting. Mm -hmm. But but by including them, the implication is there I think we that have they are an issue we for the town meeting. We have to, we have to so include those well. separate articles as spending caps, pretty much is what I'm hearing Kim right. said. We, ha we don't have, we have a, really have a choice to just we go to the town floor with a gross amount to we say. Can't. We, we, we just That's can't a block we, of money. Yeah, we, we just like can't go yeah. and saying we can't just I want, say we right. I want Thank you, Roland. Thousand dollars to operate the school. I yeah. understand that, but yeah. there's but there's nothing here that so, ties this. So so the way this is the way this is set up is <coughs> that in the end you get your total budget right. after all the formulas are figured in, and the, and the you're allowed according to the first twelve articles to expend that budget. You can ex only expend so much for this, so much for this, so much. So it's it is a line item budget because you can only expend out of that total. You can only expend what slip what's listed in that particular article. You can't expend more than that. So you it isn't like we can move money around and yeah. say, okay, well, we need something you know like maintenance or something. So we'll take it from Special a different something. article. Yeah, yeah, you, can't you know that. you can't do that. It has to be. It's capped in that within that article. Right. So the point here is and the, the school board can make that change. What change? What change? If you're going to move from one spending center to another. No, 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 no we can't do that. We can't draw down on special ed money to say go fuel the buses. That's we can't do it. No, at the end of the year, there's something when there's one process that can go through the. Like auditor, like a yeah, yeah. But you, you have but to it's, go it's, the yeah, and it's uh, like at the very end of the year. So you can't, you, you can't take money just because you have five million dollars. You can't take money and spend it on something that it wasn't capped off for. We don't have the authority to do that. We have the authority to take money from reserve accounts for specific items, mm -hmm. but we don't have, we don't have the ability to just. In years past, they they did do that, right, Tom. Did. I'll, I'll tell you. I'm sorry, in years yeah. past, they did we do, that. You to do that. They no, they did. They the board used to be authorized, but that was many years ago. Since I've been on the school committee, that that hasn't been. And we used to ask at the town meeting to vote for the people right. to vote for that. To give <laughs> right, right. But we don't have that. I don't have a problem. But with that's that. been years and years gone by. That hasn't happened. Twenty years ago. I understand that. Twenty years ago. Okay. I guess in discussions of the past two years. You have indicated to me in our discussions, or you've indicated to the committee, that in the event that you need to move money from one of these spending centers, as you've identified mm -hmm. them, to another, mm -hmm. that the school committee can do that. Yes, there is a mechanism. Okay, that's the point. But right there. only but, with but, an but auditor, the, and it's only at the end of the year, and it's only once, and okay. there's massive limitations that go with right. it. Okay, all right. So there we, we, we've, we've never, need, done, we, we've never explore, done that. We need actually. to explore those so that we understand <laughs> them. Okay, but let's. Well, we <laughs> have that in a policy, isn't that in our? It's in our budget. Yes, it's in, it's in, a, it's in our budget policy. Yeah, it's yeah. In yeah. policy. But from the point of view of the town meeting. They're looking at the terms appropriate, raise, and appropriate. There's only two articles. But they're raise and appropriate. Right. That's right. it. And, and those are the only ones that matter. As far as the school <laughs> warrant is concerned, the first 12 are informational, if you will. Yeah, I this is what that. we're going to 
right. utilize for this. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to utilize for they that. They changed it okay. 20 years ago. And we did have it differently. And right. that could be uh, cut, but yeah, we can't add on. The last two articles are the ones yeah. that raise and appropriate right. the funding mm -hmm. for these first 12. Right, and I, I don't think that That's if correct. you guys are saying that so many people are coming to you complaining that there's not enough information, I don't think that offering to the, the people of the town the information about the different articles and the caps that are being spent, I don't think that's too much information for them. I think they're perfectly capable of handling I think those 12 warrants and then understanding that 13 and 14 raise the total amount and that's what gets appropriated. I don't, I, I mean, I can maybe kind of see what your point is, but <laughs> I, I like to think that when we go to the town meeting, people are appreciative of all the information mm -hmm. that they get and that we're not ever giving them too much information and that when we get to 13 and 14 they understand that those are the two warrants that raise and appropriate the funds i think i think the budget book <clears throat> that kim puts together after we've gone through the whole process is extremely clear because for each article the the explanation for everything what's what's in this article what's in article two well this is what comes in there this comes in there this is uh, this is what we spent last year. This is what we're asking for this year, and with usually with explanations in there as well. I think our budget book. I've looked at some budget books from some other towns. I think it's it's probably more clear than any others I've seen, and I think it's totally transparent in that if anybody really wanted to know what's being spent in any one cost center, what's being spent. In instruction or what's being spent in special education all they've got to do is look in that budget book and go down through and they can see okay we're spending this much for transportation for special ed we're spending this much for out-of-district placement if we have out-of-district placement so it's it's pretty it's pretty specific and pretty clear I think I think I don't we, disagree with you it is a good budget book but <coughs> I think the, the point here is though that you have a budget book. How does that compare at the beginning of the year and the end of the year? And without an action to the town meeting, if there's a difference, mm -hmm. that's where the issue arises, okay? And I, I'm just going to leave this here because I would like to have, see what Kim is referring to. You say that answer. all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to leave that right here. I'm going to leave that right here. No, this is the, the time and the place yeah, to ask the question. Say it all. It's still in the middle of an article. Right? When we get to this reserve thing, that we, you're yeah. able to, you're, you're going to show us the authorization that the Board of Selectmen gave you all. Is that correct? The no, town gave it to us. The town, yeah. It was the, the, way, the way the articles were written and presented to the town and voted on by the town. The town gives the school committee the authority to use money from those accounts. we have accounts. a copy of that? That's all I need yeah, to mention? Yeah, it was, it was, by, it was okay. by vote it's of the cool. town. Yeah. That's fine. There's, there, there's another issue there. but yeah. <laughs> That's not an issue. The problem, it is an issue. It's not have. an issue. They have, they have a fuel reserve account. Okay. Okay? Yep. They cannot move money out of the fuel reserve account and put it in baseball baseball or any other place other than fuel mm -hmm. if they have a uh, tuition uh, what's mm -hmm. the uh, $150,000 account out of district have? tuition or right, right. Yeah. okay which is for additional students yeah. that were not correct mm -hmm. uh, special within the system special or whatever ed. special ed. you got $150,000 in that account mm -hmm. they can only use that money for yeah. that yeah. Right. they and can't use it for anything and else one child could be fifty thousand dollars a to year be, out yes. of district you know mm -hmm. to to assume that the school committee or the school budget committee whatever is shuffling money from this yeah. reserve account to that account i'm, I'm not that, making that assumption I have one last well question. by by questioning these that is throwing stones as far as I'm concerned. Not right. The high school is just a per capita charge for us, is that correct? So if right. they want to take to, uh, vo vocational uh, tech and all this kind of stuff, there's no added fees onto that at all. So just a flat no, dollar Same. per student. They're per considered same. a Sanford student when yes. it comes to who goes to the vote. And they, the parents have a, a right to ask for transfer to another school? Parents can ask for, there's a list of approved right schools that we are ha authorized by the state of Maine that are operated as approved schools. So if a parent wanted to go to a school other than Sanford, 
we could allow them to go to one of those approved schools as long as the student has been enrolled and is accepted. We will only pay up to the amount we would pay Sanford. Anything additional would be on the parent and transportation is on them. Is on the parent as well. Correct. Right. We okay. don't provide that for a school of choice. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And in the budget book as well, there's always the beginning and ending reserve accounts. So if we did use any funds in a reserve accounts, it's detailed out in the budget what we used it. It's in the audit book as well. Mm -hmm. It is. In the audit. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know. You know your numbers. Yeah. I do know my numbers. Yeah. That's good. So, and that was one of the other changes that the school committee did this year was um, allowing central office to separate out and have its own separate audit for the school. It's not combined. Not it's easier combined. to find stuff. So that way when people are looking at the town audit. <laughs> they people can, don't look at the town audit. Yeah. Very few people look I at do. the town audit. Well, it's just well, that if by having a school audit you see exactly all the all the how the money was spent, where it went, what the balances were, how we got undesignated I've been everything. There. So because I, when I tried to look at it before that, I could not really pull out fine. We thought yeah. it was difficult. It was difficult to stand pull the school more stuff out when you've got it mixed in with the. Yeah. Well, it's still the in the things. in the town audit. It is still kind of. Uh, it's not real, real easy, but it's there. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's there. Do the info is there. If you want to look to dig it out. Other ones, the bedtime reading, right? Reserve no, it's not good bedtime reading. Um, I don't know what you're saying. Take right to that? Well, uh, Possibly. Uh, we just finished the rest of okay. the articles just so that we go through them real quick. We're on so 13, 14. 13 and 14, and I'm not going to go into all the right. formulas or anything, and they're all pretty detailed there. You know, it does take into account revenues. Revenue. So our EPS, or what we get for, for SPED subsidies, what we get for nutrition, what we get for, um, uh, what's the other one? The Medicare, the things like that. For, um, and, then, and then also you have to do the EPS formula that says how much is above the minimum EPS amount for students. So, that's just a formula. And again, we, I do all the calculations out um, in the booklet as well as in the article so people can follow the math okay. all the way down through it. So Article 15 um, is basically a summary of the whole proposed budget. So it tells how much we are, are Article 13 and Article 14, so the minimum amount to raise, the additional amount to raise, um, what we what we might transfer in from undesigned funds, our state subsidy that we receive, and any other revenues, um, and any nutrition revenues, so that it actually does the math for the total budget. Um, and that's just a summary account. When we get into Articles 16 through 18, these are all about grants, and we receive quite a few grants. We receive um, our local entitlement grant, which is our special education grant, which is over $100,000. We receive Title I money, which is about 55000 We receive um, Title II money, which is about twelve, which is help for teachers for professional development. Um, we also have now some <laughs> curriculum money, so it was the first time we got this year, um, which was about another 10000 And then Does that get money our again, please? Huh? What was that for? Curriculum. Oh, curriculum. Yeah, Thank to you. help us buy, and we did, we bought um, some new books where we're working on getting our health curriculum all up to speed and getting people trained, so, and that's pretty much really online now. Um, and we also have grant money for rural grants, so we use that for special programs for um, our standard recovery program we used it for. We use it for, um, you know, extra trips or having authors come to the school or having, you know, a theater come to the school, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so all, but the thing is, all those grants are coming from either state or federal monies. We only have one checking account. 
So these articles allow me to receive the money into our operating account. That's what Article 16 is. And then Article um, 17 allows me to <coughs> spend under the grant money. So it all stays within. I have to keep everything separate by their fund codes and everything in that regard. So you have no private grants? We did. Non-governmental? No, no, we did. We, we got Do um, we now? We don't now. You don't now. Uh, no. Do you have a, a grant a searcher or a grant writer? or? Right, lean. We're looking at her. Yeah, we, <laughs> Here, I mean, on, hard. On, yeah. in you the know, school. It, Am I looking at her? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I was one, and then also Eileen was one. She got um, quite a few last year. Um, but it, it with all the grants we have, it's a lot of, there's a lot of paperwork. Oh, yes. To go. And it's everything targeted. has to yeah. be, you know, documented, and then it's all verified, and then they come in on you. Da, 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 so, so. Um, These are state and federal grants that have a lot of front work with paperwork that's done at a central <coughs> office, but it needs to go to the town to accept and spend under the auspices of what the state and federal government have said these need to be used for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, and then Article 18, um, <laughs> this is just to, to uh, the amount of revenues we have for nutrition. Um, so we get um, lunch subsidies. We, we're we one of the few schools that actually incorporate our nutrition program within our operating account, so we want to make sure we offset the revenues, but we also have to be able to accept those revenues, so that's what Article 18 is all about. It's more about formality to make sure that we know exactly how the money is going in. Um, but you still have to have authorization to be able to do that. Um, and now, I, and then one of the last things, like I said, well, is the reserve of funds. Um, and I can go back and print out the articles that we had. We only had the one year in 2014 where we had um, a few articles for that, for the reserve accounts. Okay. Um, and again, just to, to say what I said before, it's. We, we went to the town, we asked to create them, we asked to transfer funds into it, we asked for authority to, to, for the school committee to expend funds out, but only, only for what was it was requested for within each of those articles and cannot be used for anything else. And your auditor looks at those specifically, I assume, uh, for provisional uh, statutory uh, yes. funds. <laughs> and, and even in our audit, if you, look, if you go and towards so, the end, there was a whole section on the reserve accounts and what exactly the each criteria one of them were, were and how you met the criteria. Yeah, and, okay. and what our beginning balances were, and if we had spent anything, how much we spent, and then I also detailed exactly we spent it on this, 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 and this. So it, you knew how it went back and matched. I understand. <coughs> and I think that brings you pretty close to the end. Those are the articles, the reserves. Some language about monitoring and adjustments in a school committee piece at the very end. I think we need to cover that. Any questions from anybody out there that aren't at the table? Any dialogue. It's a, just a workshop, completely open. Okay. Any thoughts, comments, any concluding questions from Warrant and Finance or the school committee? Came quickly. May I? Um, on the reserve things, you are referencing in this uh, Title 20A reference. Mm -hmm. It was my understanding that those that those were that those were created yeah. under Title 30A. Yep. Doesn't say anywhere. Um, let's see, page 17. <coughs> it, it, it references Title 20A on on. Yeah, on Title 20A Education School Organization. At the school news financing, subchapter 4, 1312 is reserve funds. So these are all my how to establish them, deposits, expending money from reserves. So that's, that's I followed everything. Okay, we can, we can talk about that later on too. Yeah. But make sure you copy that and give it to him. No, oh, yeah. I have. I, I think he has it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will go, I, I will, I probably have it. That's okay. I mean, the laws. So have you changed. have you have so some that are 38. 
Do you have some reserves that are 38? No, no. None. None. Okay. I think that might be Our school a has to follow Title 28. Yeah, 28, I don't know what 38 is, but 28 is school. 30 30 statutory is reserve. Which is municipality. Which municipality. Okay. 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 I'm familiar with 28. Okay. okay. Yeah. The, there is a difference between right. sc school and municipalities. And that's where some of the differences come right. in. I think 30 yeah. refers to the municipality, yeah. and 20 is for the schools. Right. For, but this is a municipal reserve fund, basically, because you are mm -hmm. part of the town. But that's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll go back to it. <laughs> uh, to deal with a town meeting in, in a town and a, in a town government, you have to comply with with state law, and 20A also applies. 30A also applies, I think. But that's okay. Let's move on. All right. Well, I was asking any any concluding thoughts, comments, or questions from either Warren Finance or School Committee. I think we're pretty close to the end then. So, the so next, we'll meet uh, Tuesday. So Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So yeah. Let me just review. Next Tuesday. It's just coming uh, Tuesday. Are yeah. we going to have the? Yeah, you're going to. Six. You're going to get it electronically. Electronically. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to put them all together like you did last year. No. Oh, that was so nice of you. Why <laughs> ah. well, you collect them as they come? <laughs> Well, we'll you, we hope you hope, you hope we'll like hell that right? your computer Punch. stays up. Are they still on legal sheets? Size? Letter. Letter, Letter size. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, eight and a half by 11, right? Now, are yeah, we saying if there's a storm Tuesday, this. it's automatically Wednesday? Is this one of the things? This is a good time to talk about that with the finance. And, yeah, well, I, we did that for the, the school, school committee. The school committee. So I we didn't get say some. that for the budget and finance. Oh, I didn't know. Let's do a quick straw. Let's talk well, about that real quick. I don't know what their schedule is, yeah. so I couldn't. Here's, here's what the school committee okay. and I talked about. We, we're in an interesting pattern of storms. and. <laughs> Every now and then, school isn't open, and the question would be, if school is not open on a Tuesday, then we wouldn't have a business meeting Tuesday <coughs> evening, and it was the school committee's purview, I believe, to say, let's do it the following day. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have to post seven, how many days in advance. So we post so. a storm date now. Kim will do that. So I guess I'm asking Warren Finance, I don't know what the weather's going to be. If you grew up in Maine like I did, you don't look on a Thursday what Tuesday's going to look like. <laughs> you go and you turn the TV on on Monday morning and you're somewhere close and even then you don't know, Put the right? shade up on Tuesday right. morning. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rose. Like. So, so, so I'm not going to predict what the weather will be, but if for some reason we can't meet Tuesday night, for we would hope meeting. for budget for meeting. Budget we would hope we would meet Wednesday night here, same place, Just but same time. No. The, following day. The, the following day. The following day. Is it 24 good. hours later? Does that work for you? The same no. time. Okay. The same, same time. Same location. So correct. Right. Okay. Very good. Great. Let's just go with that then that as a blueprint matter. moving forward. Okay. okay. All right. So when we do the agenda, I'll make sure Wednesday, when you see the agenda, you'll day. see snow, snow day, day next day. day. Yeah. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make sure I write down Wednesday. motion to adjourn our meeting. Make a motion to adjourn at 7.20. Second. You guys going to vote? All right. Yeah, we I can't get it. Let's go. Tell Kevin he can watch the meeting on the